So I'm here today to tell you about a story. It's a story about a teenage girl, and she grew up in a world that did not care about her. It divided people into categories, and she was thrown into a position of power because the government failed her and everybody else. And now she has to save the world. It kind of sounds like any famous YA novel, um, but it's my life, minus the hot guys fighting over me. So <laughs> our story starts in sixth grade, when I was moved from one turbulent married household to two turbulent divorce households. I was really shuttled between parents like a piece of furniture, you know the one, that you don't want but you have too much emotional attachment to get rid of. It led to me getting called into the counselor's office in seventh grade because one of my friends told a school official that I was planning to commit suicide. The counselor pulled out a phone to call my parents, even though I wanted to commit suicide because of them. I was treated as their washcloth to kind of clean up any spill of anger, frustration, or other emotions. When there was a bad day at work, I was the first to take a brunt of it. And the counselor didn't understand that putting me back in the arms of my parents wouldn't solve the problem, but make it worse. And it did. And I didn't get any help for my suicidal urges or the awful environment that later made me develop complex post-traumatic stress disorder, one of the most severe and hardest to treat forms of PTSD. Here's the thing, it could have been fixed if somebody listened to me, but they didn't. And that was the first time a system had failed me. And in my freshman year of high school, my love for robotics had landed me one of the most coveted positions as the first Code with Clossy Scholar in 2015. And I made my very first app that summer. And it was called Anxiety Helper. And it was designed for people like me, who didn't have access to traditional therapy because of financial or physical barriers. 18 people downloaded it the first day it came out, September 25th, 2015. I was 13, and I snuck the charge for my developer's license on my mom's credit card. I, cre <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I created the user interface using free online photo software, uh, and I used my YouTube and my Tumblr to promote it, because at that time, I had a massive fan base of, wait for it, six people. <laughs> yeah. The shininess had begun to wore off. It caused issues with me and my parents, and I honestly didn't even tell them that I launched it. I got into a fight with them, and they got into my social media account where I talked to all of my friends and they screenshotted all of the messages, saying that I was depressed, I wanted to commit suicide, I hated school, and more. And my parents looked at the account, and they figured that it was the issue. My mom convinced her tech-savvy friend to install a keylogger on my laptop, which if you don't know, traces everything that you type. They blocked the numbers of people that they didn't want me to see, and they took away the only form of expression I had. And so I committed suicide. I didn't commit, I'm still here. I attempted suicide that night. And I went to school the next day, and I forgot I had to write an essay. And my teacher was really upset that I had nothing to show. And I remember feeling really stupid for not being able to come up with an excuse for my teacher. Because how are you supposed to tell someone who is investing their time in your future that you didn't complete an assignment because you planned on dying in your sleep? And that's when I knew a system had failed me for the second time. Because the education system taught me that I was stupid. That I wasn't deserving of a good school or a career like the other kids, even though I could teach myself app development skills in less than four months, I didn't finish my essay. And to me, school cared about measurable aspects of obedience, not intelligence, and certainly not circumstance. The third time I knew a system failed me was November 2016. I had just realized I was kind of gay, and I fell in love with a girl. I grew closer to my dad, and he moved to Los Angeles. He wanted to make things better and to take me with him. And I had never felt more hopeful for the future. And then reality came back. <laughs> Anti-LGBTQ plus rhetoric became really common at my school. My mom ripped down pride posters from walls, and my lesbian friend was attacked while out of town. And I heard our vice president, the one sitting in office right now that could theoretically have access to nuclear codes, supporting an organization called Focus on the Family, which promotes gay conversion therapy. And on the day after the election, I got in an empty classroom with my friends, and we cried. I cried for my friends because I couldn't stay and protect them, 
but I couldn't move and not protect myself. And I cried because that was the third time a government that was supposed to keep me safe failed to do so, because the government that was supposed to keep me safe basically put a kick me sign on my back. And they took away protections for trans youth, and they refused to let them serve in the military. And today, LGBTQ plus discrimination is still legal in 31 states. And so I made one of the hardest decisions of my entire life, and I left. But I gave my friends something in my absence, and I wanted them to have the world. But at the time, I could only give them what I knew how to build, an app. And so I created something called Verena, and it's the first and only security system that protects members of the LGBTQ plus community. And I want to take a moment to let it sink in that over the past three years, I have done more than people in government to protect abused LGBTQ plus kids and people. I mean, you kind of know you really fucked up when a teenager has to do your job for you, so. And so I saw that that was a recurring pattern, and I saw that I had a different vision for technology than most companies, and I wanted to use it to help marginalized communities. So I launched my nonprofit software development company called Astro Labs last May. I dropped out of high school to help it succeed. I was $1,500 in debt, which was my entire life savings, and we fundraised eight whole dollars. And so I was convinced the thing that I ruined my prospects of having a normal life for was a failure. And that's when I realized that a system failed me again. I compared myself to other developers and to guys whose connections got them into Ivy Leagues and venture capitalist positions and who had financial wealth to send them to a safe future that wasn't possible for me. And I hated myself for not fitting into Silicon Valley's capitalistic ideal of success. And I cried for hours after getting rejected twice from Y Combinator and other accelerators because those were my only chances of finally leaving home, a task which I still haven't been able to do today. And for a long time, I judged myself based on how these systems said I should. I was upset because the school that was supposed to prepare me for the future kept sending me into the arms of people who were my greatest obstacle in seeing it because I wasn't succeeding in a system that wasn't built for me to grow, instead to become obedient, and because the government didn't classify me as someone worthy of protecting and because Silicon Valley didn't see me as someone worthy of investment. I was so upset by the ways that these systems ruled my life that I went out of my way to avoid them. I dropped out of high school. I protested the government's anti-LGBTQ plus stances. I created a nonprofit because I was outraged at the way current technology companies steal data, data, steal data and use it to divide our world further, all for their own gain. And even today, I'm not successful in the eyes of these systems, and I probably never will be. But I'm successful in mine because I haven't accomplished things because of my environment, yet in spite of it. And I did things on my terms. I get a lot of people telling me that I'm an inspiration and that I'm so strong for making it out of these situations alive and doing the best that I can. But honestly, I don't think I'm somebody to be admired because there are hundreds of thousands or even, other, or even millions of other kids out there that are crushed by these systems that are supposed to protect us. And I'm just one of those kids that still has a voice to speak up about it. Because a lot of these kids get into worse situations than I do. And some of them don't get out alive. And they should be the ones getting admired. Because most of them don't get to stand in front of 7,000 people to talk about it. Black kids get swept up into the school to prison pipeline to deal with invisible biases and could be forced into lower income areas where they are less likely to get the healthcare, resources, education, or safety comparable to their white peers. LGBTQ plus kids go to conversion therapy and spend the rest of their life believing that there is something inherently wrong with loving someone or commit suicide to avoid being shamed by their peers for the rest of their life. Kids with learning disabilities and disorders are treated as lower class citizens and thrown into environments where they aren't given the tools or resources to succeed and for some, even the name of their condition is a slur and synonymous for stupid. Girls are raped and forced to continue living with PTSD because our justice system thinks that six months is a reasonable sentence for stealing someone's voice and right to say no. And then they are taught that it is their fault that men believe that they are entitled to their bodies like they are entitled to a seat on a park bench. Those at the top 
think the system is working fine because they're the exact people that these systems are designed for. And those who it doesn't work for are out of luck because much like me, they aren't seen as profitable or worthy by these governments and institutions that were supposed to have their back. So why can't we fix these systems? And the answer is because we teach outliers that they are the problem instead of correcting systems to adjust for outliers. And even when we come up with solutions to systemic problems, we price them and sell them as a product. Is your kid not doing too well in school? Pay $30,000 a year to go to a private school. If your kid isn't doing well and you live in a low-income area and $30,000 is your yearly salary, the idea of paying $30,000 for a new school to do something that your child's school should be doing is a goddamn joke. Thank you. I mean, I was angry at these systems, and I obviously still am. And I tried to change myself to fit into them. But looking back now, I realized that I should have had to try to change myself because it was not a failure on my part, but a failure of bigger institutions to meet my needs. Because we teach these kids that these systems are the only option, the only path to success, and that they have to complete them at any cost whether it's their mental health, their sexual identity, their race, their happiness, or worst case scenario, their life. But we don't force these systems to adapt to these kids. So what do we do now? We need to come together and tackle the problems, and we need to redesign these systems so that they don't crush kids that fall through the cracks and fail to pick them up. We must remove the cracks they fall through and not push them into these situations in the first place. We are gonna get there by arguing, or by tweeting angrily at people, as much as that's my favorite pastime. We have to talk, and we have to understand, and we have to make change happen. And I'm very happy to announce that Astro Labs is launching a new platform called Rally on April 26th, designed to bring systemic change in the reach of everyday people. We give people a place to have a moderated conversation, away from echo chambers, social pressure, and we developed a system for them to unite across political divides to achieve common goals. Then we give grassroots organizations who are already creating the change the tools that they need to connect these people who want to help and encourage collaboration to make systems better. I might be naive, and it might never work, but we're running out of options. I was fortunate enough last year to keynote the sister conference in Pennsylvania, and I told something to the audience then that I will tell you now. If you see something wrong, fix it. If you see someone hurt, help them. If you're not trying to be a part of the solution, then you are a part of the problem. Because of that, if you see a solution, you need to make it a reality. And if you don't do something, who else will? And the answer to that question is nobody. Because nobody built solutions for the things that I went through, because I had to do that myself. And quite frankly, I'm sick of being crushed. And I'm sick of watching my friends and my family go through the same thing. And I'm sick of people and institutions that are supposed to be keeping me safe, taunting me for not making something happen because I was born a square. And they want me to crawl through a triangular hole to consider me a shape. And if there's anything I learned from YA novels, it's that the teenage girl cannot save the world if she doesn't have people wanting to save it with her. So you're going into the same future in the world that I am. We have to make sure it's a world that we want to go into. We have to make sure it's a world that we all built, not one that others built for us. Because there are more kids out there, just like me. And these kids have been failed by these systems, and they are relying on people building a kinder world for them. They are relying on us, and they need us to build a world where we define these systems, not the other way around. A world where kids do not have to think it is their fault for not being able to thrive in a world that refuses to make accommodations for them and teaches them that it is their fault for not succeeding and that to succeed, they have to erase parts of themselves or suffer the consequences. A world where the systems adjust for the needs of the people and not the other way around. So I want a better world, but I need you to build it with me. Thank you. <laughs>